Zeit. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ross Patterson Revolution. Brought to you by BlackRifleCoffee.com. Hi. You have been <laughs> missed, Jabes. You've been missed. Oh my gosh, I'm back. Yeah. Yeah. You... The people are going to be so excited. I've no lie. I got maybe three emails of like, she better come back or two... I'm going to. Yeah. I got two messages. So between us, Five people are pissed. Yes. And we will this this will make them happy. This show is for the five of them. Yeah. That's the way I look at it. Yeah, we do the we go for <clears throat> quality of people. Yeah. Not quantity. Yeah. So we only want the best. Our focus eight. group is is five to eight people. Um, the best and and eight. years old. Sure, and they range. <laughs> they range in age. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, definitely range in age. Big day today, James. I'm glad. I'm I'm sprightly. I'm I'm glad you're here. Things are going on. Me too. Man, there's a, there's a lot going on here. I don't even have a computer in front of me. No, you don't. No, I'm free falling. Yeah, we're live from Los Angeles, <laughs> James. You're living your best life. Oh, uh, free balling. Yeah, you're you're back. I feel. Oh. My God! You got energy. Old, you're old not tired. Stomping grounds. The sun is rejuvenating you, me. You lived on this side of town. I did. This is my hood. Yeah. So what's what's your jam over here? So we're up the street from the rustique. A rustique. Yeah, yeah. Um, where I worked and played for many years. Yes, you the were a bartender there. Old rustic inn. Uh-huh. My gosh, we're by all Isn't kinds like of Mark things. Mark Marin and them live up here. They live in Highland Park, so we're in a different hipster hood. Ah, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Very similar. Isn't it? Very similar. Lots of uh, fixie bikes and uh, motorcycles and um, plaid. So we've been doing a lot of live shows out here, which you guys are going to hear in the the upcoming weeks live from Los Angeles. It's always tricky when you rent an Airbnb because you don't know what you're going to get or why or whatever. This place is incredible. Amazing. Probably... Three and a half million dollars somewhere in there for for something like this. It's definitely a house that I've seen on the hill um, living in this neighborhood and been like, oh, my God, unless I'm in a porn, I will never step foot. Do you know what I'm saying? In a house like that. So it feels kind of surreal to be looking down on Very my porny. old studio apartment. Yeah. And yeah. Like, and there's a, an elementary school down there, too. Yeah, look past that. That's creepy. I was trying to get away from the sound of children laughing. <laughs> and there it was as I woke up, huh? I left my kids. Yeah. So that I could have a little bit of peace. And then, and boom. Gosh. Elementary school full of kids. Sp- laughing. The joy yeah. was making me mad yeah. this morning. Yeah. You were, you were very Dan Holloway this morning about it. <laughs> you know? Was I? You could hear those children's laughter at like seven thirty in the morning, and you're yeah, like, and it was "Man, not what I wanted." No, you hear that in real life. You don't want to Airbnb in here. That no, uh, but it's nice. It's you know, the funny thing about LA is the views, like of a place like this, where you're like, "Man, I you're spending three and a half million dollars to look at a, a an elementary school and and power lines and like a some form weird... of uh, old studio from the seventies that yeah. looked like it was never reopened." With uh, those gigantic satellite dishes, yeah. where you're like, "Whoa, we don't use that anymore. Why are those still out there?" There's a woman with what appears to be a grow house uh, underneath. Why not down? You know, down the hill. Why not? Um, and then across the street, I, I don't know if you noticed the boards that people had set up, obviously due to some t- t- some type of flood that had oh, happened. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, that's that's LA. That's that's showbiz, that's baby. Showbiz, baby. And then uh, right down the hill, do you remember that kid from, I think it was Sons of Anarchy that uh, did a bunch of bath salts and went into that old lady's house and like bit her face off? Yes. Right down the street from here. So we're, we've got a bit of everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? Nice Up in the Los Feliz hill, hills. Yeah. Yeah. No, Things? but I, I look, I, I enjoy coming back to Los Angeles just for a very short amount of time. 
And uh, I do too. I, like, I, I, I mean, will... and especially like a day like today where you're like the Tarantino trailer dropped, right? And oh, you know really everybody like... in town is stoked and it's trending, and and you're watching, and you're like, oh fuck, man. It feels like the old days where you're like, oh, man, this is going to be amazing. And then yeah. you remember, you know, Tarantino only puts out a movie every five years now. And yeah, uh, what would you think of it? The same of the trailer. Yeah. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is what it's called. It's uh, Hollywood from 1969. And it also deals with the Manson murders, um, but also like movie stars, old movie stars and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio is playing a, a Western TV star. Yeah. And Brad Pitt is his stunt double. I, I I was in. I was in, but I'm already in. So I have to say, this is not going to be a popular opinion, but I think the trailer could have been better. I, don't, I know the movie's going to be great. Yeah, so. I, I'm with you. I don't know what it is yet. Yeah, I'm lo- Leonardo DiCaprio. I mean, I'm loving the whole. He's he's getting back into Wolf of Wall Street kind of vibe, sure, which I love. But um, definitely as a trailer, I maybe watched. I watched two trailers before we went on, so I maybe watched them in the wrong order. order. Yeah. Um, but I wanted a little bit more out of that trailer because I know the movie's going to be awesome. I'm not deterred. Like I don't even have to watch a trailer. Yeah. For a Quentin Tarantino movie, like I you, will. You just could just tell me it's coming out and I'm good. And Same. I'm going to go and I'm going to love it. So the trailer to me can be whatever i was just hoping for it you could drop it like a beyonce album in the middle of the night and then i would go see a tarantino movie whatever it is i drop it whatever i'm doing and go see it so i don't even know if there is a trailer that could do it justice for what you're looking forward to and all of that so yeah i was i was trying to think back to like pulp fiction trailer or none of those really did it for me either i hate our Um, what was the uh django django did for me it did and you know Reservoir Dogs, if you go back and watch that trailer now, right. it does it does it for you. But is it because you've watched the movie and you've seen it and you know how iconic it is? Because like for me, Reservoir Dogs, I was like, ah, this, this looks kind of cool. At the time, it was so different that I'd never seen anything like it. Well, you remember it was just them slow motion <coughs> yeah, walking, walking um, and it was intriguing. So with the Once Upon a Time in Hollywood... I would either want it to be intriguing in a way that you're like, what is it? Or completely give me a mini Tarantino movie. So what they kind of did was both. And I just, I, you know, so Reservoir Dogs, I loved because you were like, what is it even? Right. Um, but obviously it's amazing. I mean, what am I even fucking talking about? Uh, I, like look- I'm sitting here in a... You know, yeah, Airbnb yeah, yeah, yeah. and fucking <laughs> kind of some fucking banner going, Tarantino, I didn't love your trailer. So, again. Thought you were a piece of shit. Yeah, good luck with that yeah. whole career, right? I know. Um, so, no, I, I'm not even going to. Here's the other interesting part about it was um, in the trailer it said this is his ninth movie. I was surprised to see it because he apparently is really sticking to this 10 film thing. But that only came up recently. And the last, I believe it was Hateful Eight where he was just like, all right, great. And was that number eight? Uh, Yes. So that was number eight. This is nine. And then there's one more after this. Whether that was the master plan all the way around, I don't know. But this is the first time in a trailer and on a poster where I've actually seen a countdown of... Hey, this is, you know, number nine. Congratulations. That's it. That's got me more than whatever the movie is going to be. Just that ninth, like the number nine that there's only one more. Yeah. That alone. I mean, I'm in. Same. But that alone gets me in a way of like, holy shit. Is it really going to be done? Yeah. And the more and more I think about it in today's day and age, and especially with Spielberg bitching. Uh, to the Oscars about not allowing Netflix movies or any, anything like that. There's nobody who loves true film than Tarantino. And I mean, shooting on it, like he shoots on what 35 he shot on 70 for mm-hmm. uh, hateful eight and the, the theatrical experience, you know, he owns what the Beverly, which, you know, all they do is show weird movies. Yeah. And that was, that was going to close down, but all he shows is movies prints. He doesn't right. show you, digital movies mm, there. You've got to watch amazing. a 35 millimeter film there. So for a guy like that who loves cinema as much as he does, it's kind of the right time to exit 
you know, in a couple years here, whatever his next movie is going to be, and walk away with those 10 and probably go down as maybe the best, in my opinion. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. Spielberg's put time, out like, well look Spielberg's put out amazing classics and all that shit but and they have and he predates us just a little bit do you know what I mean right and so if you're talking about completely our generation completely movies that shaped us when we started going to the movies by ourselves right Tarantino yeah so absolutely I agree with that yeah, I was I was trying to put him in a category of, you know, I would say Spielberg, obviously Scorsese. Um but those movies are different like Spielberg is making like ET and shit. Tarantino's and not very, making movies like that. No, and they Spielberg, Taran, you know, uh Spielberg, Scorsese have a formula and they have a very you know, methodical way of making old school movies the way that they learned how to do it, right? right? Um, and they maybe do a couple cool shots and stuff, but they're nowhere near the weird shit that Tarantino does and out of the box and filming, you know, the way he's filming stuff. So classically, if you were, if you were to say this person is the best director, right? Yeah. I mean, by the book, Spielberg is the best, right? Right. But for what the you coolest, want, the coolest, and, <laughs> and he writes his own shit. Spielberg doesn't write these scripts. Different, out of the box, trying new things, um, provoking you, making you leave the theater and be like, "Fucking, I want to get yeah. a gun and actually shoot someone." Yeah, and how cool that would uh, be. be great. Oh, doesn't he make you feel like he does murder? He does. And I was, uh, I was Rad. here last time. His last movie came out, and uh, I was in post production on a film. And I, I, there was a render for these goddamn renders for these movies take forever. Uh, you know it oh so well doing these know. videos yeah. and stuff. You're basically just sitting. You know, you hit start, yes. and it gives. It's like four hours, right? So at the time, I had another meeting uh, across town later that night. And I was like, man, if I fucking leave Hollywood, like I still have to wait for this to render and pick up this drive. If I leave now and then go down there and come back, I'll be stuck in traffic or whatever. I was right. like, uh, but Hateful Eight was playing. And that was a three and a half okay. hour movie. And I was like, I'm in. I went, I, I saw it by myself. Uh, it had intermission. Beautiful. And, I mean, and I saw it in 70 because they were, they had, you know, one, one or two shows a week that were in super 70 of what he shot it in with the intermission. And there was a you know a full score be- before it and all that stuff and like I got out at intermission and I was like fuck I can't wait to go back in and see the second half of this movie experiences like that are, are very few and far between and Tarantino's a guy that has definitely done that for me where I was just like my mind is blown off yeah um, I mean I couldn't even comprehend that you know I think eighteen or nineteen years old was was on the first time I saw Pulp Fiction and I couldn't even comprehend. What this was, what type of writing style it took, and how you put all those pieces together. I was smart enough to know that he was saving like John Travolta's career. Like, I, like I was smart enough you to know smart, that. You were smart enough to know that that, that was a comeback for him. Y- yes, at that time, I think I knew that too. But I, think I wasn't was smart like, enough hey. to know how difficult it was to write and direct something of that magnitude. Yeah, put it all together, get it sold. Yeah, have someone get on. That's the main part of it that we we never understood. Probably was getting someone to agree to it and pay Some pay for it. W- w- yeah, with with a with a budget you. of yeah. you know thirty million or whatever that movie costs. Forget it. And today you 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 still can't do that. Like you can't walk in and say, "All right, I'm going to make this badass thing," and that's it. Like you take the hot young director right now, and I would probably say it's probably Ryan Coogler. Yeah. Um. But he had to do Fruitvale Station at three million dollar budget, and then boom, he got Black Panther. Right, which is still actually a and he did weird. Cre- I think he did Creed. I did, yeah. I think, well, I think he did Creed in between. To go from Fruitvale to Creed, well, I mean, yeah. that was a jump as well. Bo- someone had to both. Some suit had to actually know their shit. Yeah, yeah. So it it's just rare. You don't you don't see it very often. It was a a guy who worked for Tristan. Uh, back in the day, Mark Webb was the director. He directed mm-hmm. uh, 500 Days of Summer yep. and then Spider-Man after that. Where you're like, whoa, what are we? That is a f- 
Two hundred and fifty million dollar jump right there. You just it's made. all re- you know. It's all return. Yeah. What you got on your return. So if you yeah, if you made some tiny movie for this, but you got this much out of it, that's all they're looking at. Yeah, crazy. Uh, look, ton of exciting Hollywood shit going on today. A uh, lot of listener submissions for Jable's thoughts on Woodstock. So we're gonna get to that in a Ugh. second. Okay. <laughs> you know, it was weird when that when it popped up in my feed. I was like, it's it fifty years. 50 years. 50 fucking years. They've been like, wow. Um, and the lineup's interesting. So we'll get to it and whether, we'll or not, or whether or not the Jabes would go to Woodstock. I'll hear it. <laughs> I'm not, I don't know what's going to happen. But well, First, look, you know we got some sponsors, James. You know I we got some know. sponsors. I do know. First and foremost, talking about BlackRifleCoffee.com. Little BRCC. Hold that hat up. That's a new hat from those guys. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This one is sweet. It is sweet. I love a green, like a, a green and gray. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Do these guys fucking do it right, man? Across the board. Uh, what other coffee company has apparel that's so recognizable that you're like, oh, shit, that's fucking amazing. So we're live do- or we're here doing the, or you're here doing the Drinking Bros live show- Correct. shows. Correct. Yes. Yep. And pretty much everyone, every guest, no matter who they are, is like, I'll take a hat. Yeah. We've brought, we've, cause we've, I'll take we a hat. Them. I'll take a thing. They look at it and they're like, yeah, I'll fucking take one. Yeah. 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 So it's like, oh, you guys just, are the Black Rifle Coffee guys. Just, you know, speaks to everyone. It's amazing. Uh, look, go and sign up for their subscription of the month program, their coffee club. You get exclusive deals that aren't available to the public. Yet, like the Whoopi hoodie, uh, I, dude, I've got the new windbreaker. Nobody knows about that. It's coming out soon in a couple of weeks. Pretty it sweet. is well worth it. And you know, if you're a member of it, it just gets emailed to you, and then you can buy it for the for Gen Pop gets it before they get their dirty little hands on it, and before it sells out, all their shit sells out. And they're, they're, look, they restock super fucking fast, but they just make great products across the board that just sell out. And you're like, fuck, man, how do I get in? That's how you get in. Uh, Coffee Club of the Month is about four dollars cheaper than Costco. They got bags, they got K cups, gets delivered to your house on the same date of every month. Go to blackriflecoffee.com, type in the promo code Revolution for twenty percent off. Next up, we got ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. They never changed it because they didn't have to. No. They didn't have to. They didn't need to there. All one big happy family. And I made a fucking gaff, a boo-boo, if you will. A boo boo. Oh, that's right. They, uh, with the they told you. Uh uh-uh. uh. Military and first responders get it, get fifteen percent off no matter what, always, which is amazing. That just started happening. I said you could do it on top of the deal. They came back and said, No, Ross, that's basically giving away a free mattress. And Don't I be want dumb. to apologize yeah. for that. I was way, way off in that assumption. Sure, um that sure. would have been like a six hundred dollar savings. And I'm <laughs> super sorry. Sorry. With the way it stands now, it's like two hundred dollars off, and the bundle Look, package. Awesome. Yeah, if you get the bundle package with uh, the adjustable base and the mattress and the pillows and all that shit, it's seven ninety nine. That's what. That's a one time only use for that bundle package because everybody was buying those too. It's again, it's one of those mattresses where once you have it in your house and you have those pillows, because the pillows are just as amazing as the mattress, you put it in all the rooms and look, I'm guilty of it. I've used my promo code numerous times. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. Look, so, we're buying it. Yeah. Yeah. But yes, we do buy our own products. But just like Gen Pop, we're going to use the... Uh-huh. Oh, D'Anthony, uh-huh. D'Anthony just Ooh. popped in. Go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros and get on them deals. Them deals, deals, deals. Next up, we got strikeforceenergy.com. Shabloinkers. Shabloinkers. Four amazing flavors. Lemon, orange, orange, and make America grape again. 10-pack, 40-pack, 750-milliliter bottle. The rest on your bar top or countertop, and you can just boom, boom, pop a couple squirts in and go. I have been jamming those down my fucking face. Yeah. Because when we're out here, we try to get as many celebrities as we can on. Um, and, uh, man, I would say I am on my third pack of Strike Force right now. Have to. Have to. It's a necessity. Because everybody rolls by and they want a drink. And we're like, yeah, well, yeah, we'll have some drinks with you. Yeah. But. So you can either do some In blow. order to keep that going. Yeah, yeah. You can either do some blow. Do some blow. Or you can just kind of do politely some have some strike, strike force, force and yeah. keep it even. 
Yeah. Uh, they also have a subscription of the month. Uh, no carbs, sugars. It's great for diets and all that shit. So go to strikeforceenergy.com. Promo code REVOLUTION, 20% off. Now's the one you've, you always wait for. Last but not least, straightrazors.com. Ooh, that's a clean cut. Smooth. You like it? Oh, there it is. You know I was waiting for it. So quiet in the house. I feel like embarrassed. The thing about it is, too, (laughs) you've been gone for three shows, I think. And we there is a you like it Instagram page that has been started that is gaining steam. Uh, The the ringtone, by the way, is still selling thousands of copies a month. I'm sorry. Um, no, go to iTunes, get the You Right Kid ringtone. Uh, and Straight Razors is amped about it. I got a, I got an email from them finally and they were just like, hey man. And I was like, oh, I was waiting, oh, I was waiting for it. Yes. I was waiting for They're it. Gonna shut it down. And then they said it was okay. And I was like, thank God. Oh, I thought you were going to say they raked it. No, they, 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 I think, I think he said he rubbed it. Oh, good. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, best beard products in the game. Uh, they got look, beard oils, mustache waxes, conditioners. Uh, their straight razors is second to none. If you're worried about using a straight razor, you can use a safety razor for your face. Um, and they got, they got everything there. Um, they got shampoos, conditioners, you name it. Anything you need to groom. And be a well-groomed man, which is important. It is. And their shaving kits are like old school tombstone kits. Uh, you can get it engraved, too. You can get them engraved for Father's Day and all that stuff. So. And it looks really cool. The best. Love StrayRazors.com. And as always, promo code REVOLUTION, 20% off. Another trailer drop today, Jabes. What? Stranger Things. Yeah, so I watched that The one. third season. I got caught up in the magic of it. Oh, the song, Teenage Wasteland, the fucking... Uh, all of it all of it they just those fucking boys those brothers huh? i love that show i love the direction that it's taken i mean because look i i didn't know where they were gonna go after being little kids because you know look as an actor you grow up yeah and you grow up on screen so how does that translate and, and it looks like they're all either entering people don't like it high school or time. middle school they don't like to see you know, the kids grow up. It's like 90210, the college years. Like yeah, but it, 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 this looks like the summer before, and it comes out July 4th. This looks like the summer before they go to maybe high school, okay? It, it appears as if they're going like maybe yeah, 14 yeah. years old. Yeah. And uh, I enjoyed it. Like, oh. And I think, I think if you're going to tell it in an honest way, like the trailer appears of what it is at that age growing yeah. up, um, especially in the eighties when they do it, like, like that's the nostalgia I get wrapped up in where I'm just like, holy and shit. And they just do that perfectly. Stranger things. The story is, is what it is to me, but the most intriguing thing and the best thing, the best part about it to me is how they capture that time and period and right. feeling of the movies back then perfectly yeah. without overdoing it, without shoving it down your throat. It's, they, they just do it perfectly. By the way, I miss Sean Aston. Oh, that's right. He died. Yeah, yeah, he died he in the last died. one. I miss him. I Spoiler. Miss him. Just Spoiler kidding. alert. You're an idiot if you haven't seen it. I know he's doing a show on Netflix with Melissa Joan Hart that just got picked up for a full season <laughs> where he's a Melissa. dad or something. But Melissa. Uh, yeah. We but- won't be having her on. <laughs> Not a fan of hers? Not a fan. Really? No. Mm. Do you know in real life? Never have been okay. a fan. I never got it. I never got how anyone thought she was cute in any way. I know her whole story, by the way. And then I listened the last thing that she got in hot water about talking about, you know, not letting her friends be her her children be friends with Jews and just kind of letting them know that they're not actually going to heaven and maybe you shouldn't be hanging out with people that aren't Was that Melissa Joan Hart that said that? That's crazy. That's that's You're talking about Clarice. Uh, Yeah, Clarissa explains it all. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. She's one of those. She's one of those. In a in a way that you just go I mean, listen you know, be Christian, all of these things, totally fine. It's just the way that she is um, moving forward with that. Right. Yeah, I, is, I, I'm, uh, I'm looking at it now. You're, you are correct. And she's, you know, denying making these anti-Semitic 
there, it's remarks. On, look, when you go on a podcast, we have the files forever. So to, you yeah, can yeah, deny yeah, yeah, it all yeah. you want. Totally. And we'll just keep playing the sound bites. So, and it's fine. It's not horrible. I'm just not a huge fan of hers anyways. Right. And never got her whole appeal. I never got how one person thought she was good looking ever or good. You know, or it's, good. F- it's funny. Like she was one of the very first celebrities that I met when I moved to L.A. And, you know, she was Sabrina and the Teenage Witch totally. and all that stuff. And my buddy actually lived with her. Um, and she had this dope ass house. Uh, I'm not going to say where it is in case she still lives there. But um, she was she was single. And younger, obviously, she was mm-hmm. probably 22, 23. She was never like that. Like, not religious or anything. So, Yeah, like, but she's always been a mom to me. Yeah. She's always looked like a mom. She's always been plain and frumpy, plain Jane. <laughs> and so the fact that she has turned into a mom that says stuff like that. Right. I, w- I just am saying I knew it all along. Just like I knew everything. Yeah. yeah. Michael Jackson. The th- I, I knew it all along. <laughs> I don't want to say it again, but Melissa Joan Hart, I always knew she was going to grow up to, to be a, a let me talk to your manager piece of shit, mom. Oof. Carry on. What Carry on. Say? No. So I, I, it was weird because again, most of everything you're saying is, is true. Like she was a mom. I, she never got fucked up. I never saw her, you know, blowing rails or, no. or beer bonging She's or anything like that. And frumpy and plain Jane. But she was super nice. Uh, it's, it's strange to see people grow up in their weird habits with celebrities and children. To me, it's just a fuck all. You know, you have these you know, vaccine deniers and all that other shit. And it's part of this town, though. I mean, even driving today, just driving around the windy hills of this whole mm-hmm. fuckery, like cars are screaming down hills at, at you know 50 60 miles an hour i almost hit a goddamn maserati on the way to get some coffee this morning right and it's right outside of an elementary school where you're like oh yeah what what yeah. wait these houses shouldn't be this close to the, an elementary school yeah where you're looking lurching down over these kids and you're the like mexican nannies that pick them up have to be really careful yeah yeah but you also develop a sense of ah nothing's gonna happen to me i saw a mom of two with like a cart just walk across not look at the lights and i was like man you could get smoked at any fucking moment that's just part of this town oh yeah yeah uh, strange strange i want to get into woodstock james oh boy yeah i know it's your fave nobody loves an outdoor music fest like the jablers or camping or just playing around <laughs> in the mud and just listening to music all day. And that's the thing on Drinking Bros, too, is everybody gives with the Evan thing. They're like, oh, yeah, Evan, let, let's let's free Jesse. Let's have Evan have Jesse. Jesse hates every single thing that Evan likes in this world. He doesn't want me to go. He's going to go by himself, and I am going to stay home. Jesse hates uh, anything outdoors. I do not camp or do anything outdoors. Nothing outdoors. No. You will never have a sleep. I lay out. A sleepover outside. Yeah. I'll lay out. And you lay out for 45 minutes. 45 minutes to an hour on a comfy chair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never on the, <laughs> never on the ground. Uh, I you, never touch the ground with a towel or otherwise. You will never eat anything out of a can on a, on a fire. That's something about yourself that will never happen in this no, lifetime. No, I may be allergic to aluminum. We're not sure. <laughs> so I do not do that. Yeah, there's two strikes. Yeah, t- two strikes. Are you trying around. to talk me out of uh, of Evan? It's not going to work. Not at all. I'm just joking. Not at all. <laughs> What I'm saying is this is Woodstock right here. This is Woodstock in a fucking nutshell. Right. You're out because they're doing it at the original No covering campground. whatsoever. You can't Nothing. find any shade. Yeah. And I doubt there's a VIP area like Coachella. So you're out in it living in Woodstock doing the whole fucking shit. No, I'm good. Um, and they've got a mixture here. I'm looking at the old to new. Uh, man, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to find this lineup. I thought the lineup was interesting. I know Jay Z is the headliner on the third day. Mm. What, what's what's the these days? What is he not headlining? Have you ever seen him in concert? I haven't. He's fucking incredible. I'm sure he is. He's he's that guy is is one of the best live shows. Shockingly, by the way. Yeah, and if I'm <coughs> indoor in a comfy seat with a drink, then I'd be happy to enjoy him. Right, just not out. Just not outdoors with no covering or no VIP. Right, right. Carry on. 
So the first night we got uh, looks like the Killers. Man, the fucking Killers live. Oh yeah, big fan. That I've seen and that I love, but it's a little. It's a little what? It's just not. I mean, that's not a cutting edge band to throw up there. Give no, me. but that's a fun fucking party it's a band fun where it's party just party like, band. hey, we're gonna yeah. have a really good time tonight. The weird one to me is up next, and that's Miley Cyrus. So where does she fit in at Woodstock? That's a hard one. Now, next up is Santana. That motherfucker played at Woodstock in 69 on the most acid that a human has ever taken in one ingestion in their life. And if you look at that, because there was an interview with him afterward... I've never seen anybody shred like that, and God bless him, like he ripped it up. He does, but he, he thought does. he said he thought he, it, like there was a boa constrictor wrapped around part of the guitar neck at one point. And he was just trying to keep the, the snake from biting his fingers. I want that Santana. If you're going to give me Santana, go ahead and put some acid because he was doing what? Uh, not the blotter acid. He was doing those uh, the paper tabs. Okay. In in the headband, in so they the would okay, yeah, sweat yeah, yeah, into yeah, yeah, into his yeah. pores, into his eyes. He was that type of acid user. I want that Santana. And I wonder if his wife would let him do it just for that night of like, hey, man. And that's the thing that will be missing from this pussified Woodstock, right? So right. there's not going to be any, you won't even be able to bring anything in. I mean, the security in this is going to make it the oh, most yeah, 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 yeah. unfun, boring campsite of all time we'll find out uh lumineers we won't i mean lumineers is up next on, on day one that's a big boy band i'm a big fan of those guys the okay. rack tours obviously is Obvious. uh one of jack white's side projects big fan of them robert plant um is performing obviously the lead singer led zeppelin i don't know his backup band the sensational space shifters oh, God. but I'm a, I'm a fan of that name uh now here's where the jablers gets gets her tits up uh, Nathaniel Rateliff and the Night Sweats. Obviously, I'd go for that. Yeah. Uh, John Fogarty's on the lineup. That's oh. fucking rad. Okay. Run the Jewels. I just saw them a couple weeks ago at the Super Bowl. They opened up for Foo Fighters. They're incredible. Um, the rest of it's, you know, Akon. That's when you start to go down the, the garbage heap of uh, Grandson. Uh, there's a band named Grandson. There's a bit, just grandson. a band named Grandson. Why would you name your band grandson nobody That's knows but it's weird. provocative yeah exactly night two dead and company so that's grateful dead that is uh the remaining people other than jerry garcia which to me sorry deadheads uh when jerry died the band died there's no reason to to go on anymore true we're all good chance the rapper he puts on a dope show that'll be cool Hell yeah uh black keys black keys are great sturgill simpson shit sturgill simpson's great Greta Van Fleet. Now, that's going to be interesting because is Robert Plant going to come out and sing for them? He probably them? doesn't even look in their direction. Is he going to come out and sing before them because that band ripped off Led Zeppelin and the lead singer sounds identical to him? Has and, he said anything about it? Yes. So he gave a one-sentence statement in an interview. Okay. And they, they said, what do you think about Greta Van Fleet and the comparisons to Led Zeppelin? And he was like... They sound like us, and I hope they make a lot of money. Or he said, I think they'll make a lot of money off of that. Oh, my gosh. So it was a, it was a very, learned. like, yeah. how do you decode oh, that's this shady. That's type shady. of statement? But clearly, I mean, he's sick of hearing it. I'm fucking sick of, of, of hearing that this is the band that's going to save rock and roll. Because this that's it, man. Uh, that, that's all they talk about is this band saving rock and roll. It's like, no, if you play their album... And don't tell anybody. You would think it's a lost vault full of yeah. B sides that never got released for Led Zeppelin that just weren't good enough. They're and on the they bill. They kind of seem like the band. They seem like a band, kind of like Queen, where they they're not letting it go. Like they they are still trying to be the biggest thing, right? So they would never. Yeah, and they're step they're young kids. Like yeah, they're younger kids. Now the ultimate boss move would be if Robert Plant came out and sang one song with them. Just because that was their inspiration. If Robert Plant was trying to get them out of the fucking would. hot water that they're in for that, like that would that would melt people's minds. He won't do it. I don't think he'll do I it either, but it would be a boss it. move. Um, next up is Portugal the Man. Nice. Which you're a fan of. Uh, Leon Bridges is great. Gary Clark Jr. is great. Edward Sharp and the Magnetic Zeros are fucking great. 
David Crosby and Friends. Crosby was at the original 1969 Woodstock. You know, if you're bringing your dad, I guess. Could you imagine taking your dad and just doing blotter acid with him, just watching fucking Woodstock? He would do it. What do you? He'd boil a pipe and fucking get on down the road. Come on. Could you imagine taking your dad to Woodstock? No, tell this story to the audience. He, He... he boiled his fucking weed pipe, right? And you guys all got accidentally gotten, high? My dad has gotten me high accidentally two times now. He hotboxed so you in a time, car. which I've told on the, on the show, we're driving to Thanksgiving, Bakersfield, because not to brag, but I used to spend Thanksgiving in Bakersfield. Yeah. Um, that is a that is very braggy. J- I know. Meth capital of the like world. I say it. Very braggy. People, yeah, people start to think differently. Oh, she's super bougie. Yeah, 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 yeah. But anyway, so I used to go to Bakersfield all the time. We would go in a truck with my brothers and my dad, and I fell asleep in the back. I think this was probably the last time I went. So I fell asleep in the back seat. I woke up, and my brother and my dad had hotboxed the truck to the point where I woke up just high as shit partly mad but really high yeah so it was because i was mad about being high because i don't like to smoke weed so that was number one right time number two is recently when i was just at his house he decided drunk as shit he decided that he was going to take his pipe metal pipe about 15 years old that he had always spo- smoked out of. I used to steal and smoke. Sure, sure, Never sure. Never been cleaned. Is he? He seems like one of those guys who's had the same pipe his entire life. Yeah. So there was a wooden one, right? Right. You know those like wooden, just a block yeah, 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 of yeah. wood with a little hole in it. You and have to use a, a hanger one. to get the yeah. the resin out of. Yes. Yeah. So uh, metal, old school metal one with just the bowl, simple. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? yeah. So he decided. Put my baby to bed upstairs. He decided, drunk as shit, that he's going to now gets the bright idea to boil his black tar resin filled 15 year old metal pipe. Puts it in a pot, boiling water, and basically fumes, steams out. What do you call it? Vape. Right. So basically vapes out the whole house. I mean, it is a toxic amount. We're opening doors. We're coughing. Yeah. I go up in the baby's room. It's like a little bit stinky. Not bad, but it's definitely like entered. When that you room. clean out a pipe like that in your house, forget it. I mean, you've I mean, got to be a single that? human. If it's resin that is built up for 15 years. Here's like, what I don't understand. Those are, those are so hash. cheap. Those pipes are so cheap. You know my family. But just buy it. It's $12, man. I mean, Bakersfield. I know that pipe. Yeah. Like that's a twelve dollar pipe. At this point, they're probably Throw it giving the garbage them away can. with fidget spinners. Yeah, exactly. So, it, it. But that's how my family. Is. I'm just like, what are you fucking thinking? So would he do it? Would he go to Woodstock if you asked and said, "Hey, yeah, I'm down. Definitely. Do you want to go for the Definitely. weekend? Definitely. Definitely. I, you should take him just for the podcast and just tell the story of what oh would my happen. Gosh. And give him acid, which he would take bunch of weed which you think he would take acid at this age i think he would um his friend gave him some and he said it was in the freezer Uh i don't know if he took it but he's he has some at his house right now whoa so it's in the freezer and it's you know all whatever but he has some because he has all these you know friends disc right. golfing weed smoking and they all do mushrooms sure 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 acid they're all dads right right 60s dads they went to woodstock right yeah so they still have if they think about partying that's the way they think about doing it it's always smoke a bunch of weed maybe take some ash uh acid uh-huh. and mushrooms and beer right those are the three things that they think about as like sure the party thing yeah, yeah, yeah. no coke no hard alcohol even no fucking you know molly it's those three things that they're like that's yeah. the that's the woodstock crowd so that would be a great take a zoom lob him up yeah mic him up for the whole mic experience him up for the whole thing Whew, i don't Remember know when he drank that root beer weed yeah. thing that you brought oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. gone so it says to just take a little cap yeah and we were about to go to dinner, my brother's birthday. And he like didn't read it at all, took a huge swig, didn't feel anything, 
Cause so as you another know, one. As you know, with edibles, you have to wait one fucking second even. <laughs> Didn't feel anything. Huge sw- another swig. Basically ended up drinking half the bottle, right? Yeah. And he was at dinner and we were sitting next to him, right? Yeah. And he was tripping out. He kept thinking that I was talking about the show Sneaky Pete. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> from Amazon, which, which I hate that show. I would <laughs> nobody, never talk, nobody, nobody talks about Sneaky Pete nobody, on a regular nobody basis. Nobody talks about Sneaky Pete other than to say they don't really like Sneaky Pete, right? <laughs> so he's sitting next to me, full on conversations going on, and he keeps just leaning over and going, Sneaky Pete? You guys talking about, talking sneaky, about Pete? sneaky Pete? No, Dad. Just giving him a cracker. No, Dad. We're not talking about <laughs> Sneaky Pete. You know what's funny? The the last time I saw him uh, on this, I think no, he's at our house for Thanksgiving, and oh, he yeah. goes, uh, he goes, hey, uh, where'd you get that root beer? And I was like, oh, oh. The, I was like, you you want some you more? You want more? Of yeah, that? Yeah, that was a goes, weird night. And he goes, yeah, yeah, that was real good. And I was like, man, you were really high. And he goes. Well, I, I probably took too much or whatever. And I was like, All right. he said he had fun. So that's the difference is like, he was like, that was a blast. Yeah. Yeah. And to me, I would be like, oh my God, I like missed my whole son's birthday. And I was like, <laughs> all I was talking about was sneaky Pete. And like, that would be me. But for him, he goes, I was fucking great. I didn't have to listen to your mom shit. I wasn't even like, yeah, you know, I was loving it. Uh, I'm going to have to get him a bottle and say thank you oh, for, totally. for the trip and the journey and everything. Um, <laughs> the trip and the journey. Yeah. Cause it, it's always, it always is, you know? Sure. It always and is. And it will continue to be. It always is. Yeah. I, so but look, yeah, he it, so if he sure. was here, um, the, the, look, there's a band called soccer mommy. Sure. He would love that band. <laughs> big fan of that. Uh, Sunday night, Jay Z's closing it out. Uh, big boy show. He's great live. A uh, big fan. Imagine Dragons. Whoa. Ooh, ooh. Some type of ballad. Mm-hmm. You know, they're, it's all Lots ballad. Lots of drums. And Halsey. Whoa, whoa, whoing. Oh, your girlfriend ooh, Halsey. Halsey. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. your girlfriend. Talking about sexing up the event. Uh, Halsey's there. I'm in. She'll probably paint a picture. Why not? I'm all in She'll for Halsey. She'll probably paint and say. Oh, Cage the Elephant. You know I love Cage the Elephant. Do you or do you just like saying the name? I like saying the name. I, t- I told you that story when I went to go see Foo Fighters and they opened up for Foo Fighters and I got super baked. And, Cage uh, the Elephant. Oh, I kept screaming and there was only, you know, we had dope ass seats or 10th row or whatever it was. It was there was a, a couple of couples in front of us. All I kept screaming at was, Cage the Elephant. You need to let that yeah. elephant out of the cage. I need oh, to God. see it uncaged. Great band, though. I actually enjoy them. This motherfucker, the lead singer, will jump out into any crowd and stage dive anytime, anywhere. Climb up anything. Like It's a, it's a great show. KG Elephant's great. Uh, Brandy Carlisle, great. Um, okay. Jan- how does this Janelle Monet get invited to all this fucking shit? I don't get she's it. I don't available. think she's talented. I'm over her whole shit. She is like a festival person though. Like I don't know if Because she's still trying to to make it and God bless her, but fuck, Mm-mm. she's boring as hell. Mm-mm. Uh Common, not a not a fan of Common. Uh the rest of these guys are like Earl Sweatshirt's kind of dope, but he's later on down the list. Pussy Riot is, oh. is on there. It must be out of jail in Russia. Nice. Good, Good for, for them. them. Yeah, good oh, for them. Oh, precious. Oh, pudding. Oh, oh pudding bear. <laughs> pudding pussy riots here. Oh, Did you imagine <laughs> you just tell your dad, you got to grab a beer uh, real quick, dad. We got to get back for the next band. Who is it? Pussy riot. That's the other thing. He would have so many opinions about everybody that wasn't at the first one <laughs> that I would have to hear about that the whole time. I don't know. Pussy Riot. Oh, oh. What the fuck is this Who's shit? after Pussy Riot, grandson? What about oh, that? God. Oh, Soccer Mommy. By the way, it's Soccer Mommy, too. Not Soccer Mom. mom. Nope, Got it's it. Mommy. And that's Got two it. separate words on that. So that's one of those things where you're like, hey, we probably should have thought a little bit more about our band name other than naming it Soccer Mommy. I mean, what the fuck? What was that convo like? What are we going to name our band? We're cool. We're kick ass. They never thought they were going to be on a see it in print. That's what Coldplay said. Yeah. They never thought. When I watched that Coldplay doc, 
they were like, "What's the what's what's the your biggest disappointment?" And they were like, "Yeah, we probably should have picked a better band name." I and they, and they were like, "We never thought we were going to be big when we were stuck with Coldplay." Yeah, uh, which is true. I don't know what the fuck Coldplay means. You know exactly. So, uh, yeah, put some thought in your band names out there. You sons of bitches. You sons of whores. You fucking sons of whores. What else? A uh, lot of shh, lot of things going down, James. Okay. A lot of things going down. I want to talk. I want to talk about this. Uh, this this chick. This Charlie Kirk chick. Um, man, that's a weird story that Hollywood Reporter dropped. Uh, there was an actress who had kind of the the CEO of of Warner Brothers uh, got bounced, right? Okay. So, you know, he got me too. Sexual mm-hmm. harassment got out of there. Uh, it turns out he was having a, an affair with this girl who was trying to be an actress. And for whatever reason, the Hollywood Reporter decided to do this story that was, was like five pages. Um, her name's not Charlie Kirk. I want to say it's Charlotte Kirk. Um, I think it's Charlotte. Yeah. Uh, it is Charlotte Kirk. And for whatever reason, she got thrown under the bus on this of like, you know, this guy was trying to pressure other studio heads to put her in movies and TV shows and all this other shit. And I guess she was having an affair with him. It's weird because he's an old China man. Um, sure. So she's a white girl, kind of looks like Amber Heard ish. Right. Um, but they kind of fucking threw her under the bus in all of this and said, hey, so she wasn't the one you're that you're came sleeping out? with all these people. No, it wasn't her. OK, so, and so they, they outed her. Yes, they outed her in this. And I find I find that weird. That I don't this like. guy, you know, the guy she was banging was the dirt bag. But like, you know, of course, he's going to try to get, get her into other movies and all this other shit. One of the companies that they called was the, the, the very first financiers that did 710 Split, my first movie. And some of the people they called out in this article uh, were people that produced my movie. Um, look, are they dirt bags? Sure. Yeah, you bet. Sure. But they never me too to anybody. They never, you know. Right. Um, it was all consensual. I mean, there is, there's a lot of girls I knew who were just like, all right, sweet. And maybe it was a weird situation for them, but I always feel like you should be the one in charge of your own coming out. Correct. Whether it's like I was molested or I me too. That's up to you. Right. To tell, so I feel. I no feel. T- I, I read this article you. and I feel terrible for this girl now, who look is trying to do whatever she's trying to do. I don't give a shit if she's banging dudes for roles. Like, why are you outing that? I mean, you could do that to fucking everybody in the history of man out here. Exactly, it's crazy to me. So when I saw this, I thought to myself, "Go fuck yourself, Hollywood Reporter." Because like, she definitely could come out. Yeah, if she wanted, one hundred percent. This guy has already been thrown under the bus. Yeah. You now she could just throw fuel on that fire. If she get wanted a book to, but deal, she do whatever want she wants. No, she, she want wants anybody. to continue her life and not be known for that. And it's going to be up to her. Yeah. So they to asked tell her who she wants when she wants. They asked her for a comment on this because this this guy got fired, obviously. And uh, she said, "Look, I'm I'm sad that he lost his job, and I'm sad to hear the allegations, and I want to move on with my life. But it wasn't me, so I don't, you know, I don't fucking like I was like it was consensual, is what she's saying. Yeah, hundred yeah, yeah, yeah. percent. was. I, you know, they dated. So right. w- what are you going to do in that situation? Was this guy married? Yeah, he was. But, but that's on him. That's on him, not her. So to to come out and completely nuke her career all the way around is super fucked to me. Yeah. Cause but that, that's what happens when you out people. It's like, it's not. I guess, but she wasn't the one. You. She wasn't the one outing anybody, that's which what is I'm what saying. I don't understand. Like, that's not. That, that one's a hard pill for me to swallow. Um, because I, 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 again, however you have to make it, there's a lot of people, Chelsea Handler, Jesus Christ, she fucked everyone coming up. She even put out a sex tape. Right. And and a lot of people don't know that. If you Google Chelsea Handler sex tape or just, it's on radar online. It's still there. You can watch it. Um, and then she ended up sleeping with a head of E, gets her own show at E. They end up dating for a few years, uh, blah, blah, blah. Who gives a but shit? She's fine with it. She's not coming. Everybody out else is saying fine with it. that she had any problem with it. So it's not up, you know, it's not up to anyone but her to let us know if that was a bad situation for her. That's what I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, it is what it is. I mean, now if we're doing that to fucking actors and actresses, what what is all of this shit? 
uh, e- even about really then. Well, because Me Too is a uh, business now. Yeah, so that, that's what that's what it seems like. But who's? Oh, it is. There's a there's a head of Me Too. Who's cashing in on this though? The lawyers, the Gloria yeah. Allred, and, and yeah. all those fucks. Yes. Man, that that seems. It just seems like a shit show now, all the way around. Um, now we're gonna fucking jump into Alex Jones here. What? The government is now trying to censor URLs. So, uh, Zero Head just got blocked. Um, they're going around now nuking those. So, I what is he gonna be on a fucking street corner? You know he's gonna be next. Okay, so they're blocking his website? It appears so. Um, they're, they're launching a 50-hour Save the First Amendment to stop big tech censorship broadcasts. We had talked about this a while back. I mean, fuck, the show we did about this, we did a show called Freedom of Speech. We were in right around top 70, top 80 in podcasts. Do that show, gone from the charts. Um, the show was called Freedom of Speech. You can go and listen to it. It's one of the biggest in our history. And I was unaware how many people truly loved Alex Jones mm-hmm. and everything that was going on at that time. And, you know, all of this is like search words and all that other bullshit. And I, I'd clearly written it in the description of what the show was about and what we were doing and everything else. All of a sudden, you know, it disappears mm-hmm. along with all of his shit. He's saying now... Uh, in wake of, of last week's terror attacks in, in the New Zealand mosque, um, that these websites that were, had, had been showing the footage are going to be blocked and taken down, some of them forever. Matt and I at the office tried to pull it up because we were sleeping when, when that whole New Zealand attack went down. And 4chan was down. I don't know that they're back up yet. But what I said to Matt when we looked at it was, hey, man, if they're blocking this now, the entire site, what's next? Could they just go out and block Infowars altogether or, or anything that they don't feel is credible or doesn't line up with, with their ideals and all that shit? And apparently it's happening now. So what do you do at this point? Where did, what does he do then? Like if, if he gets, the, the, this Alex is his last Jones? stand. Yeah. He's got Infowars.com and that's it. I mean, what does he Alex, do after this? I think he's, I think we're, I mean. People are still going there. And they will for a little bit, but I think eventually if there's no place uh, does he? You so let be, me ask this. Then, Looking at Rogan's numbers when he was on Rogan, mm-hmm. does he just become a high priced guest on other people's shows knowing Possibly. the, knowing the ratings he's going to bring in? Possibly. Because I'll, I'll, fucking be real like if if we had an opportunity to pay alex jones to come on the show i'd back up the fucking truck because i know this show would go through the roof if you knew that that show would be banned for you yeah but rogan's he didn't get banned for it rogan's above the fucking law he is above the law like he he can kind of do and say whatever he wants i don't know how but it's almost like he owns his own internet jared you're sitting in the background is 4chan blocked for good now. So Matt and I couldn't get on for 48 hours, right? You can get on 8 chan. Ah, there we go. It's up it's up now. For 48 hours after that shooting, we could not get on and it said error 402. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if maybe they were trying to clean out that video. We found yeah. it. I mean, once yeah. it's out there, it's you out can there. You always find it, but But uh, so he's, he's, he's launching this campaign 50 hours to save the, the first amendment. P- part of me agrees with him. Like, you know, yes, you could go out in the fucking street corners and, and shout to the world, your message of whatever that is. But you know, these apps and all this shit are free. They're owned by private companies, but mm-hmm. fuck that man. I, t- to me, what I heard, like, you know, obviously his numbers went down, but people are still going to Infowars. Yes. And he's going even harder against people. So uh, if you go to the top of his page, he's doing this 50-hour emergency broadcast that's going to be live streamed. I don't know if he if, – is he going all 50 hours himself? I'm sure. Look, let's I'm face it. Sure. If there's one guy who could do it, it's oh Alex Jones. Oh, my God. Just whispering by the end. <laughs> <laughs> right? Because how much, how much blow does that guy do a week anyways on top of – because the paranoia is taking over yeah, him. Yeah, so now he's on, um, you know, I'm sure medication as well as 
Oh boy, I'm gonna be Lots honest, man. If this, I would like to tune into this on hour like 45, because at that point, he's gonna talk about putting his actual dick inside an alien on DMT, mm-hmm. and I am here for all of it. I want to hear I'm... hour 45 of a coked up Alex Jones. On, like, hey, injecting DMT live, maybe licking the back of, like, 14 African frogs just to stay awake five more hours about whatever message this is. Sure. If this is a real fucking thing, I want in on it. Um, What day is he going to do this? Shit. I can't can't turn up the volume on this, but I got to find out when this is. Again, I will tune in if he's doing this. Oh, Saturday. All right, so it's starting Thursday at 8 a.m. Central Time and going till Saturday, 10 a.m. Oh Central Time. Oh, my God. I want to catch that at 5 a.m. on Saturday, five hours before the end of it, and see how fucking amazingly crazy this is. No. That is a dream right there, Japes. That is an absolute fucking dream right oh, there. Viewers, yeah. He'll be sweating. Whatever suits or button down he's wearing will be ripped open at that point. Completely off. Uh, he'll have that weird guy who's always patched in from Britain who doesn't know <laughs> oh, any yeah, of the news yeah, stories yeah, that he's yeah, talking yeah, about. Yeah. That guy's going to be on there. Uh, I am excited for that. What happened to uh, PewDiePie in all of this? You know, he was named in that manifesto of like everybody su- subscribed to PewDiePie. Mm-hmm. But he had nothing to do with it. So, you know, it's one of those weird situations where I, he probably gained a million followers from it. But, but it he came out and released kind of a statement thing that and happened said, with Alex Jones, though. What do you mean? Are you talking about the New Zealand shooting or the, 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 shit, the shit that he was doing before? Because PewDiePie is up and running again. He's back on all platforms. Okay. Whereas Alex Jones is just fucking gone. He's wiped out completely. Right. But if PewDiePie is able to continue after people have claimed that they're doing things in his name, which is Correct. the same thing that happened to Alex Jones. Then- yeah. And L- Logan Paul came back as well. You know, YouTube was like, hey, we're going to fuck you and fuck you and fuck you. And he came back as well. I, I don't know if they'll return to Alex Jones. I don't He's know. He's the worst. I, He's look, the worst. Again, we've talked about this numerous times on the show. I find him an, an, an entertaining. entertaining. Um, but I, you know, I don't subscribe to half the shit he no. says, I, or I even I'm know if it's say true. Any. Yeah. From anything other than entertainment. Uh, yeah. But crazy man, fifty hours a fifty-hour emergency broadcast. That's exactly what the world needs: is fifty hours of Alex Jones coked up out of his mind. My God, man, whoever the dealer is that's selling him that blow before that 50 hour thing is probably looking at, at, at a brand new house right now. Probably ordered that new Tesla that's just going to show up at your fucking house. Yeah. Whoever Alex Jones Coke dealer is right now is, is the happiest guy on the planet. That this is going down. Oh, yeah. Second happiest, this guy, but only hour 45 to 50. I'm only going five on this. Uh, and I'm going to pop it open. There's no app, though, so I'm going to have to watch this shit on a hard desk. On a hard top. <laughs> hard top. That's weird. <laughs> on top of your hard top. Car. Yeah. Yeah, weird. Uh, now's the point of the show. We get to the revolutionary figure of the day, Jabes. I want to give it I want to give it to your since we're right above your bar that you used to work at. Oh yes. Uh, tell the people tell the people about what made that place special and why it's still here. The Ye Rustic Inn? Yes. And we had our pre party for range fifteen there. Um, it's an institution. It in is a neighborhood. Yeah. And it used to be I mean, it still is a dive bar, but it it kind of stays true to what dive bars actually uh, are. Do you know what I mean? It's not it's not like a cool hipster. They changed it and made it into a dive bar. It's a real, it's a real f- f- for real fucking bar. piece of shit bar. Yeah. Um, we had that girl that would eat uh, the frozen wings. Yep. Out of the freezer. Yeah. She- cook sausages on the coffee maker. And she was attractive too, right? Yeah. I mean, all the people that worked there were like hot messes, basically. Sure. So there's, there was never a put together. Didn't gal. John Hamm come in there every night and get drunk? Yeah, there was a bar. There was a bunch of weird celebrities that used to go there all the time. Yes, and it was a place, you know, it was like Andy Dick, John Hamm. It was Because you could place drink in the morning or the afternoon yes. and no one would judge you there. The wings are probably one of the best in the city. I know that's controversial, but for my money, yeah. they're the best. I'd say that's. That's true. 
LA is not a wing town. No. Even when like big wangs open, it was just like, ah, oh, these are okay, you know, but They're not, not the best. No. Um, so rustic, I would say has the best wings, has the hottest messes. Yeah. Dan. Dan yeah. Of gals. Yeah. 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 Um, so if you're looking to find a psychotic to, girlfriend, yes. go down to the rustic around and famously the 8 PM on a Wednesday. There, um, we're having affairs with, with having affairs with all kinds of, I mean, John Hamm was sleeping with. There's one girl, I'm not going to say her name, but she was sleeping with both John Hamm and Jason Siegel. Jason. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. No shit. Yeah. She's hot, but like hot mess. Yeah. Where you're like, I would like to take you home after your bartending shift and not take you to breakfast. Of course. You know what I'm saying? Well, you don't want to see that out in the light. No, but you do want to, after you've been drinking, kind of go to the rustic, finish out her shift. Yep. And go home with her. Yes. Uh, was that the tattooed girl? Yeah, she had tattoos. Okay. I'm, I'm kidding. Everybody at the, ru- everybody yeah, the oh, Rustic okay. had like, tattoos. Do you know who I'm talking Every about? Every single person at the Rustic had tattoos. So, yeah. yeah. You're the only one who worked there that did not have tattoos. It's true. Yeah. And what's the sitch with that? What's the year that you, you go down that road? Uh, tattoos? Yeah. I think I'm probably going to go 50, maybe 45. I like that. Go 50. Do it on your 50th. No, because maybe the skin might be a little too old on that. No, I it's actually, I, I, go I'm going to say 45. the opposite and I'll tell you why. I, I would go 50 and I'll tell you why. Because that way, your skin's going at that point anyways. At I least wanna, you know where it's at. Whereas you, if you go earlier and it sags down, then you're kind of fucked. But I, uh, I want to enjoy the years where it might be a little bit hot. Okay. So 45 is the, the thing. Look, if this show's still going, then we're, we're, we'll do it live. Yeah, and I want to get to a point where you're like, you know what you're doing for life. I never had that before, which is why I don't have tattoos. Because I never had a thing where it's like, you know, the people that have a bunch of tattoos, it's like, you're doing what you're going to do forever. For the rest of your life, you're right. Not gonna move in, you're not going to move into, you know, school teaching. Exactly. Or something like this. So That's the way I feel about Post Malone, where it's like, hey, you know my theory. He's knows. getting face tattoos. He has money forever. Yeah, and it, it keeps him working for hits because if not, he's not the fucking Walmart greeter. Absolutely. For normal people who aren't musicians, right? I would say hand tattoos and neck tattoos. That's kind of like that's where you've, you've gone checked over out the of, edge. of yep. life and well, you don't when know decided, anymore. Yeah, that's what you're gonna. This is what I am. I have friends with neck and hand tattoos, but they're rich. You have to. The ones that aren't aren't rich. They're sorry. It, it, that's that's kind of what it is. The, you made the wrong choice too soon. Yeah. And so you were never able to get rich. Correct. Yep. Correct. So I think that's smart. I think that's smart on your part. Yeah. Uh, James, this, this is fun. Welcome back. No, we're here. We're here. We're doing it. Oh, you've got you got a little color. You're back. You're alive. Ugh. You're not tired. Ugh. Yeah. You're you're, you're your say. best self. And it's sad, right, that I'm my best self in LA, and I don't ever want to live here. But it's weird, do? right? What are you going to do? Yeah, I look at it. It's strange. I look at it just purely for work now, and I just, I've never really liked this town, so it's just like, uh, all right, great. I'm here working again. Big deal. I like the ambition. I like to feel, I like to, f- you can feel the wheels turning yeah. around you, smell right? Smell the streets. Yeah. You like to smell the streets, James. The smog. Get in it. Okay, let's go. Uh, for Jesse Wiseman, a.k.a. The Jables, I am Ross Patterson. This is The Revolution. Good night, everyone. Good night.